you know, there's some information here about different types of advertising. So uh, um, there is a question on the exam about a, a digital type, which is actually called a skyscraper ad. Which is, it's really simple. Once you see it, you know, it's an ad that runs vertical down the side of a web page. Um, so there are always these tall, skinny ads that, uh, um, that, that are sold on web pages. And there's, you know, a variety of others. Um, banner ads, so on and so forth. Um, and uh, um, so there's more on that. And we can catch up on more on that, like, next Tuesday before we run in and do our, our review. But um, uh, it's just good to know about those skyscraper ads. And uh, what else have we got here? Yeah, so you will be pitching a television ad. Um, so you remember those uh, have been called spots uh, nine times out of 10. Participations, adjacencies, I've heard it, but everyone talks about spots. So you guys are trying to pitch a spot to uh, uh, you know whatever company um, you're working on behalf of. And uh, those spots, they air in clusters or pods. In other words, they, you know, we bundle together a certain number of spots and uh, show them during a, during a regular program. We're all used to that. But in the history of, of advertising, you know, it took a while before they arrived at that, uh, at that um, point in time. Do you guys remember what the early form of advertising was? Way back in the day, like when you'd have the GE uh, drama hour or something like that. Yeah, yeah well, it's what you call it. Good point, because the very first ads were basically like infomercials. Someone would get on the radio and just talk for 10 minutes about, you know, their real estate development. But I'm thinking sort of towards the 1940s and 50s, you'd have sponsorships, right? So big companies would sponsor shows like, uh, you know, Lucky Strikes would, uh, would sponsor a show, or uh, um, uh, GE was a big one. Ronald Reagan was actually their, their spokesperson for a long time. Um, so, so that was an earlier form of advertising. And there's still, you know, there's, there's still uh, sponsorship um, that goes on. Uh, but now it's largely, uh, you know, you will hear from, uh, for instance, in political advertising, you'll still hear the phrase, you know, uh, this message was sponsored by, you know, citizens for a more conservative America or something like that, you know. And they're actually, in, in broadcast, they are required to state uh, who's behind the advertisement. Versus, you know, we've heard a lot about, um, uh, you know, uh, misleading advertising in social media. And uh, there's talk there of trying to extend that rule into social media. Because right now you can put a message out on you know, a social media platform, and you don't have to say who paid for it or where it came from, which makes it, you know, um, all the more difficult to try to figure out, like, who is trying to communicate with you and whether, whether the information is true or stuff or whether it's coming from, you know, some small town in Eastern Europe with, you know, a uh, uh, hundred teenagers who are <laughs> spamming, spamming Facebook or something. Um, what else? Oh, okay, this, this was interesting, too. The idea that uh, as, as uh, cable and original cable uh, programming becomes more and more present, you know, we can see more and more cable channels, uh, it has um, worked, you know, to drive down the value of the advertisement on a lot of those channels, simply because the audience is fragmented. So this is something you'll see you know, um, on online as well. Uh, the, the more the number of digital outlets there are, the more places for people to go, uh, you know, that, that means that your ad is going to capture a smaller and smaller audience. So, so having more channels or more websites or just more places to draw the audience fragments them, right? When you had 40 million people watching CBS, the CBS advertising time was really valuable. But you know, now you may only have four million, and they're all off, you know, on a ton of different channels. You know? So the audience fragmentation drives down the, you know, the the the, the, uh, the value of advertising, even though you know there's competition amongst advertisers and cable channels to find the right niche, you know, to find a profitable audience that uh, isn't served by anybody else. So. 
But in general, it drives down the value, which is tough. Um, radio, you know, we're, we were talking about uh, uh, how radio is still uh, um, still a vital player, although it, you know, it is <laughs> its audience is fragmenting out to different forms of, of online music provision and stuff. But you know, just take a look. Still, radio advertising has you know, uh, a lot of arguments for it, starting with number one, local, right? It's local, it's, it's uh, uh, you know, unlike your online, which isn't targeted, or at least not easily targetable, uh, your local radio station is targeting your particular community and stuff, so it targets well. It's pretty cheap, uh, you know, like uh, about $900 per advertising minute which is, you know, this is in, you know, the drive time, which is the most expensive time to buy. So uh, that, that, you know, leads to pretty low price compared to uh, uh, your television advertising. Um, and, you, you know, it's uh, in broadcasting, again, and those, during those drive times, it has a pretty high reach compared to, compared to a website, which, you know, cumulatively, it may get a fair number of hits. But, uh, uh, a radio ad can target during the day a particular audience at a good price, and uh, you know you can be quite successful with it in a in a concentrated period of time. You know, and yeah, that's another thing. Ads blend with content, so uh, you know if you're on a rock station, you can have rock music in your ad. You can you know have uh, even personalities from the station voicing those ads, and so they're less irritating and intrusive than uh, a lot of other types of advertising, which, you know, television ads, especially television spots, which tend to, you know, just jump out at you and completely interrupt versus uh, radio ads can kind of blend in, which is, which is pretty nice. So um, let's just see, I pretty much, pretty much covered the highlights anyway. And, and like I said, next class we can, uh, we can jump into, um, a little more, a little more uh, on on these advertisements. Okay, I see that a couple more people who I was hoping would come have come. So now I'd like to give you about ten minutes to uh, just um, finalize your ideas for uh, just presenting on your advertisements. Um, so uh, I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's, you know, you want to save about, uh, yeah, we have 10 minutes. And after that, we'll have 45 minutes for presentation. So really, like, just five minutes would be maximum, OK? And so, you know, again, there was a long list of stuff up here. But, uh, you know, what we really want to say is you want to, uh, you know, come up as a group. And I think maybe if you designate one person to talk, or if you both were you know, sometimes there are only one, there's majority just one person in these groups. However, you know, if you want to trade off, that's fine. But just, just organize it such. And then, you know, it's uh, on my paper here, part two is presenting your pitch. So two to five minutes, it says, you know, tell us what, what product is it? You know, who are you targeting in your, with, your, with your advertisement? Uh, you know, what do you think the product does for them? And then talk about you know the creative techniques that you want to you think are, are going to be useful to you know to to pitch this idea to your you know your uh, um, your clients you know so you know we've got a premium luxury car uh, you know we want to associate it with uh, uh, you know uh, a, an extremely popular film um, we're going to use you know incredibly sleek uh, cinematography, black car. Uh, you know, we're going to tie that into, you know, the costuming on the character and the, you know, the chrome aspect and stuff like that. Uh, uh, we want to have, you know, a recognizable song from, uh, you know, the movie soundtrack is going to appear in the commercial, you know, so it's something like that where you, you know, and, and we feel this is going to target you know, an upscale, uh, younger audience, which responds well to, you know, both the movie and its type of messaging, and you know, the the way we want uh, people to think about our car. You know? So that might be one. Yeah. That would be enough, I think, when you're up here doing that as a pitch, and then we can watch the ad. Okay.
So, so uh, and thereby what we've done is we've kind of sensitized ourselves to the, you know, to, to the basic conceptual work of an advertiser, which is who do you want to reach? You know, what's the product identity? What does it do for people? Uh, and, and how are you going to achieve that given now your medium is, you know, the almost, you know, um, how could I say, television ads with, with an unlimited budget or just about, <laughs> uh, which is what Super Bowl ads turn out to be. It's been making a lot of fun. Questions about this before I give you a few minutes to talk? Yeah, Ron? And that's based off of the ad we're doing. Yeah, exactly. Our right. Pardon me? We're kind of sort of describing it. You're kind of describing it, yeah. As though as though you were saying, I'm gonna make this type of ad for you. Exactly. So so and what you want to describe is not just the way it looks or whatever, but in addition to that, and maybe prior to that, you know, how how your who your audience is and how you're gonna reach them, basically. And what what do you want to show off about your product? Yeah, Could I, maybe I should just write that up as you know, it's like a, the top three kind of, so that you can. So, um, who is your audience? Uh, and then uh, you know, how will you present it? So, and that would be like concept, characters. You know, visuals, uh, product association, anything like that. Uh -huh. This you you are really free to you know talk about what it is that you responded to in the ad. Was that that's enough for five minutes for sure. And I know you've already had a chance to talk about it. And if you had other stuff which you thought was great that you want to present, just present that to. Me. Okay, so now it's five to three by my clock. What does it say up here? Two fifty-five. So let's go till three o five, and then uh, and then we'll just figure out an order, and then we'll do it. Okay. Okay. Good. Go for it. <laughs> okay. Do it. Yeah. Do you want to be the first, Natalia? Yeah. Of course. Yes. And uh, so I'm going to put Natalia at number one. Who would like to go after Natalia? I'll go. Uh, Henry? Yeah. Henry. Okay, two. Dylan and Jonah? All right. Three. Uh, who's up next? Uh, I see Ron. Okay, so uh, Ron and company would be four. And uh, I, uh, Ivan and Sarah? Okay. Sarah, Ivan, five. And other hands up, Nico? Six. Lexus. And so Arthur, is Arthur? Okay. Yeah, seventh. Bringing up the last. Okay, so who are you with? <laughs> yep. Are you? Oh, you are? Oh, sorry. Okay, I'm just blanking out on, on names and such. All right, we got you though. Cool. Okay, Natalia. Come on up. We have a microphone, so apparently the mic, you have to speak uh, into it pretty closely in order for the people out there to hear you. All right. Okay. Are you going to put uh, the commercial? It's, I, I, I want to, yeah, uh, right. but after you talk, not before. Uh, yeah, okay. and you have to stand in, um, you have to stand about here, I think, in order for her to film you properly. So there's your mark. Okay. <laughs> there you go. All right, so my commercial is about Doritos. Everybody knows Doritos, like this bad, like tips, right? So I think the target like, like audience is pretty like easy, it's for all these people watching the Super Bowl at home with friends or just alone, doesn't matter. Uh, for me, there is like two kind of people watching like the Super Bowl. You can just go to the bar and enjoy there or you can stay home and watch the Super Bowl there. So if you're at home, what is better than, you know, a beer, some like Doritos, for example. So I think it's pretty clear. And with this commercial, um, the action, they want like the audience to do is just go and buy some Doritos and enjoy Doritos, right? So I think it's pretty it's pretty good because um, well this product uh, satisfies like just you know this feeling like hey I want to eat something something like a snack so you go and you eat something like Doritos. Um, so I really like this commercial because um, they are recreating like a scary movie. There is this character like 
Well, it's not like really scary. It's like more than funny, scary character. It's like this creepy girl, right? So with this character, they're recreating this like scary movie to guys, you know, at home, like, hey, let's go to watch the Super Bowl and then, you know, turn off the light and, oh, what's going on? There's this creepy girl here and you think, hey, this girl is gonna kill them all, you know, but no, she just wants Doritos. It's like, no, I don't want to kill you. I just want Doritos. And then I think that's, that's really cool because they start this fight, like funny fight, like, no, I want my Doritos. And I think that thing is like, mm, okay, you know what? There is nothing worse than this girl taking my Doritos. So there is like a message in this commercial that is, I rather die than giving you my Doritos. So um, I think that's the point of the commercial. I think it's great because it's like, yeah, I can die, but I'm keeping my Doritos. So yeah, let's eat some Doritos. That's it. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so let's see the ad that you have yeah. inspired here. Can I sit down? So again, yes, you may yeah. sit All down, right. of course. Maybe you don't hear things at night. This place isn't haunted, man. What was that? I don't know. I think you nailed it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna die, you know? I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I like that, you know? It's like, I'm not gonna give you my your Dorito. There's no way. All right, cool. Henry, welcome up, do your thing. So for this Hyundai, uh, since it's a crossover model, I figured it would target like a lot of families, sports-oriented. Close, they'll never Sports-oriented audiences, um, which is like perfect for the Super Bowl. So I thought, um, it could be something like light and kind of, you know, jokey or sarcastic almost. Um, so it, the scene would start off with um, a, uh, two teams, like a junior soccer team, playing at an outdoor field, and they're all waiting for the official to, uh, to get there so they could start the game. Um, and over time, once the, fit, the official finally gets there, they kind of like realize that he's kicking off all of the kids so that everybody could get home early. And we could just kind of like let the audience figure that out along with the parents in the scene. And um, so the idea is that you can rely on this Hyundai crossover to get you home to wherever you need to go. And the idea is that the Super Bowl is like so important that, you know, it would, you could like just abandon whatever, uh, abandon whatever post you're doing or whatever you were uh, needed to do that. Awesome. Do you do you think that it, because it was a family activity, like attending a kid's soccer uh, game, does that tell you something about the target audience for this, maybe? Uh, yeah. I mean, uh -huh. Like other than it being like sports. Yeah, because. Yeah, well, what I mean is, yeah, I guess it certainly resonates with Super Bowl Day and and such as you, as you were talking about. I just I, I was just thinking also um, that it it may be um, appealing to the parents' sense of oh my God, I spent all my time going to these kids' activities and stuff. Uh, I would really like to just go and do something. Yeah, exactly. Watch the game. So I think it's appealing to that, you know. Yeah. And so, so I guess, I guess that's, you know, targeting family audiences, and uh, and I suppose the, that type of car is, you know, designed for, you know, yeah, it's young like families. Modern minivan kind of. Exactly right. Yeah. Right. Displaced the, you know. Yeah. Exactly. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. All right. And which one was this was pretty early on, wasn't it? Or, let's just see. There it is. Of all Sundays, the game had to be this Sunday. I know. All right, let's go, both teams on the field. Let's go, play hard, huh? Let's get it done. Let's play. Let's all right. Go. Red card. Uh, what I do? All in. Here we go. Red card. Too cute. Trying too hard. That's rough, bro. He's getting us out of here. Red card! Twins! I can't tell them apart either. Tiny legs. Stomping his feet. 
I don't know how to tie my shoes. Steal red card. Nose pick. I saw it. <laughs> I just can't with you. You know what you did. High five. Red card. <laughs> That's game. Got enough players on the field. Happy Super Bowl, everybody. Come on. Introducing the first ever Hyundai Kona with Blue Link. Take me to Charlie's Sports Grill. It's designed to save the day. All right, cool, cool. Uh, who's up on number three of uh, the Alexa group? Dylan, Jonah, and Andrea is not here. Do we both present or do we? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, come on up. And, but, you know, whoever wants to talk can talk, or both of you, or one of you. Or... There you go. All right. Um, so we did the Amazon Alexa ad, so I'm going to pitch this spot to you guys. Um, so this product is used for general home health and life assistance through like voice commands and our target audience is like 18 to 55 years of age. Uh, throughout this ad you'll see that we present it in a comedic way that if Alexa, if Alexa lost her voice and was replaced by real celebrities on the other line they don't provide the same adequate help that Alexa does. They actually kind of do a little judgmental and inadequate what job of what Alexa would do. Um, we hope that a wider demographic using celebrities from Gordon Ramsay to Cardi B and um, the contrast of colors was significantly di different if you looked at like the people within their homes using Alexa versus the celebrities on the other line providing the help. So. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Cool. Other okay. All right. All right. All right. Do we have Do we have anything to? Well, let's just see the ad, and then maybe we can. Yeah, bring that, you guys have the that was Rapido. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's see here. And is this it? Yeah, there's not much. Uh, no. no, I'm not. I don't know what I'm looking for now. I don't know these well enough. Okay, that's Groupon. There. That's clearly an Amazon thing. This wasn't the full oh, one, it was the one at the end. It was the full one. It's the one at the end? Yeah. All right, it started like at about huh? it's after yeah. Tide. You want to give away the. Let's I see. Think it was after that. It's after this, too. Yeah. It's kind of, it was like a bonus clip. Yeah. There you go. Cool. Alexa? Amazon's Alexa lost her voice this morning, causing a Alexa wave lost of her voice. How is that even possible? We have the replacements ready. Just say the word. You're sure this is going to work? Yeah. Alexa, show me a recipe for a grilled cheese sandwich. Pathetic. You're 32 years of age, and you don't know how to make a grilled cheese sandwich. Its name is the recipe, you d Alexa, how far is Mars? Oh, crap. How far is Mars? Well, how am I supposed to know? I've never been there. This guy want to go to Mars. <laughs> For what? <laughs> There's not even oxygen there. Alexa, set the mood. Now setting the mood. You're in the bush. And you're just so dirty. And you're so sweaty. Because it's hot in that bush. Alexa, rebush. Re reboot. Alexa, play some country music. Oh, crap. I don't dance now. I make money moves. No, no. Alexa, country music. I be in the not them been so much I know they tired of me. Like to call Brandon. I'm afraid Brandon is a little tied up. But do let me know if there's anything I can help you with. Jessica? Nobody. Good boy. Thanks guys, but I'll take it from here. Okay. Cool. So any other ideas about that one, about that spot? I, th I thought your point was really good that uh, by just showing, I mean, you got, you're trying to get celebrities in there some way. So you, you know, you insert your celebrities, but as a humorous twist, and I'm glad you explicitly identified that to your client. It's going to be funny. You know, the, uh, the, uh, the celebrities are so much less competent than Alexa is just for providing the service, which I think, you know, it reflects back well on your product as well as being sort of funny and incorporating those high value celebrities, which makes everyone think, wow, Amazon has so much money. It's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Uh, M&Ms with Ron and Arnold. Uh, my name is Ron and I'm presenting M&Ms. Uh, for this particular ad, or first of all, I should really start off with um, the ad. Sorry, not the 
uh, uh, M&M's is basically chocolate, it's candy. I mean, how many of you in this room have eaten M&M's? You have? I mean, don't be shy if you're on a diet, it's fine. <laughs> uh, basically, our target audience is namely everybody. Like, it's basically chocolate. You can't put it, you can't put a, a one on chocolate, but anyway, for this particular ad, we have, well, we just have to go out the box, just throw it m to like the uh, basic downtown setting and using a penny. So we used the penny to make uh, make one m and wish come true and to become human. And that's basically it. That's pretty much it. Oh, and we also threw in uh, Danny DeVito. Uh, for those of you who actually know Danny DeVito. And then, like, um, to wrap up this whole statement here, um, I looked up the, the meaning of uh, the pennies. So basically, the penny represents the power of one meaning like new beginnings. So every time you find a penny on the ground, you can make a wish on it, but it's also mean to, um, to challenge your current beliefs of how you view the world. All right. Uh, oh yeah, and red represents adventure. Thank you. All right. So, so uh, um, I, I have a question for everybody. You can, you can uh, but I can, I can ask it too. So, so, uh, um, I'm at M&M's and I'm thinking, Danny DeVito, he costs a lot of money. Why, why should we really go with Danny DeVito? What is it about him which connects Danny DeVito to M&M's? That's because uh, Danny DeVito represents the next. Sorry? Danny DeVito represents? That's because Danny DeVito is like basically a legacy for movies. And similarly, M&M is also a legacy for all of us. Oh, okay. They're like both. They're brands that we know yeah, really well. Brands. We grew up with both of them. I mean, most of us. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ron. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I was I was thinking he's kind of he's kind of little and and uh, and sassy, you know. Round. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, he resembles the M&M more than the M&M. <laughs> true. There he is. <laughs> he looks the part. <laughs> All right, let's check it out. I've had three people try to eat me today. Three. Ooh, lucky penny. Anyway, sometimes I wish I were human. Whoa! Look at me! I'm human! <laughs> Do you want to eat me? No. Do you want to eat me? No, thanks. No? Would you like to eat me? <laughs> Nobody wants to eat me! I'm the luckiest! You dropped your lucky penny. Man, I look good. You're still short and bald. Fun character. <laughs> okay. Um, any other thoughts after you saw the M&M? I think we're just charging ahead. I don't know. I, I want to give people, anyone else who has an idea or something, give you a chance. Uh, no, uh, okay. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> no takers. No takers on that. But I, I thought that was great, Ron. Did a great job. So Groupon, Sarah and Ivan. Um, we are uh, targeting uh, people from 16 to 45, mm. uh, preferable female. And uh, um, we are trying to uh, promote the use of the app or the website. Um, the uh, spot is going to be uh, presenting a luxury life uh, with uh, nice colors, uh, not too uh, saturated. Um, just to uh, remind that candy war. Um, we are using Tiffany Adish uh, as a testimonial uh, because we want uh, someone who feels close, uh, uh, either the young people uh, we recognize in her because she's uh, funny, cool, um, and she speaks uh, in a uh, funny way, using slang and 
uh, colloquial uh, communication, but also uh, grown women will recognize themselves in her because she's beautiful, she's uh, charming, elegant, and successful. So uh, she's basically going to uh, suggest to use Groupon because you are not cheap if you use Groupon, as many people think, because she also uses Groupon. And she's also suggesting that Groupon uh, mission is also to support local businesses, so it's a second uh, reason, not less important than using Groupon itself, for using Groupon. So women who could be contrary to uh, use Groupon because it's for young people will even think about the uh, good and positive mission of Groupon. Um, basically, we just, Sarah said, um, like what we want to do is um, get Groupon out there, get that connotation that Groupon is only for cheap people exclusively, because it's not. Um, anybody can use Groupon. I've used Groupon, Sarah's used Groupon before. Uh, and by using this 30 second spot on the Super Bowl, with all these eyes glued onto TV screens, we can get that message out. Um, exactly. So, um, yeah, by using Tiffany Haddish, a uh, very uh, trending actress currently, all the kids love her on Twitter, Instagram, and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, that's what we basically want to do. We want to uh, get the message. Groupon is not exclusively for cheap people. You can use it too. You can have a spa day, and you can look pretty, and you can be a celebrity, have money, but also use Groupon. Yeah, good. Great, great. Let's look at the ad and then we'll see. When you use Groupon in your neighborhood, you're not only saving money, you're also supporting local business. I mean, what kind of person wouldn't want to support local business? I hate local business. Family owned. Even better. Shut it down. Oh. 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 When you save in your neighborhood, it feels so good. It didn't feel good for him, though. <laughs> Download the app and save. Groupon. Everybody's like, Tiffany, you're a celebrity now. Why do you still use Groupon? Aren't you worried that people will think you're cheap? Shut up, Amber. I can't stand you sometimes. Groupon makes me look good. Look at all of this. My skin is like, what? My nails are like, yes, ma'am. And my face is like, hello, stranger. Ooh, let me buy my other Groupon. Got it. About to get wrapped in mud next. Download the app and save. Groupon. All right. Uh, did you think of things that they were talking about when you saw it? or? Yeah, the, the message is clearly like, it's not only for cheap people, it's like for everybody. Yeah, yeah, and, and which is excellent. You're working against that you know, negative association with a brand. It's like, oh, it's, I wouldn't do that because it's, yeah. And that's expressed in a couple of ways, but it's great to see, you know, equivalent of Mr. Burns get, you know, get kicked with a football or whatever. It's like, so making, making fun of people who would look down on anyone who got a group. Six, Lexus, Nico. Oh, hi. Um, uh, my product that will be uh, advertising is uh, Lexus. So Lexus uh, is, uh, as you guys know, it's a luxury car. But since uh, cars nowadays are pretty difficult to um, advertise due to like the, due to the uh, high price, uh, we got a chance to, for luckily, to advertise it with the crossover for Black Panther, which is one of the uh, largest movies in 2018. So instead of ripping off from one of the scenes in Black Panther, we in Lexus, uh, instead of uh, instead uh, improvised towards using Lexus as our focus for with, with Black Panther. So we got Chadwick Boseman to. Um, to uh, help us in advertising Black Panther by using his iconic uh, costume and uh, transport, uh, transforming him also into his, um, it, to, uh, his own traditional clothes. So we focus mostly on the, the outfit uh, after his, one of his supposed missions and used, his, uh, used uh, the car itself to show its um, 
like features such as uh, touch screen, uh, movable seats, and also uh, better technology. So I guess for our, uh, for this advertisement that we're about to show you, it's uh, it's more about the car itself and how its class can uh, represent uh, more towards uh, towards like the movie and its qualities. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Vibrani, I'm secured. Well done, my king. Shuri, is my ride ready? Of course, big brother. But you have to hurry. Step into the spotlight. Experience luxury performance that takes the crowd. Presenting the all-new Lexus LS 500. Long live the king. I think you got it, yeah. Anybody, anything to add based on that one? Just hearing about Lexus. Oh, okay, come on up. Pringle. Hi, I'm Arthur, and the advertising part will be on Pringles, like those chips that don't come in bags. So the target audience is pretty much anyone who likes chips. Uh, the commercial that will be shown for advertising. Shows like about um, four guys either shooting a commercial or a movie scene, and, and two of the guys get distracted with the Pringles. So one of the guys uh, he takes a barbecue Pringle chips and and combines it with. Uh, pizza or Pringle chips okay. and then another another guy gets distracted and joins in and adds a jalapeno Pringle chips and that's like a combination of flavors yeah, that's about it all right okay thanks Arthur let's take a look at Pringles yeah yeah that's how we do it on the farm. Barbecue Pringles. Pizza Pringles. You made barbecue pizza. Wow. 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 Add a jalapeno. Spicy barbecue pizza. Wow. 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 You can stack different flavors. Nobody asked you, Kevin. Wow. Stack flavors, make new ones. Hey, can anyone can anyone make some sense of that for me as well? Well, it's, not, it's like you know, like, look how much can I create just with chip. Okay, right? I don't so know. you're being creative. Is it? What do you guys think, think of that? Okay, well, let's see, you, is it Ron, and then and then Henry. Yeah, it's cooking for poor people. Pardon me? That's cooking for poor people. Pringles. <laughs> oh, okay, but I I don't know because here we're on we're on like a film set or something like that. No, so. no, I'm just saying, oh, it's like, I don't know, it's a really entertaining way if you want to just like make your favorite food like right off the bat. Gotcha. It's like really creative though. Yeah, okay, Henry? Well, I think the point is that like, it's targeting people that already like Pringles or that are already planning on buying chips. So by saying that if you combine different flavors, it kind of puts the idea, instead of just buying one can of Pringles, you're going to buy like two or three. Okay. So, so you've got a product which is kind of, it's a, it's a known brand like Pringles, but it's diversified itself. So you have a bunch of different options. So we're kind of selling that in terms of, okay, it's not just one type of chip. There's a whole bunch of types of chips. 
And then it's kind of, you know, I don't know what, like jokingly empowering the consumer saying, okay, man, you can, you know, be creative with this, do a little more. And, and I guess it's kind of like half serious about it, half not. I don't know, you guys are making it's sense small. of this for I mean, me. I think it's just like, look at this new flavor. It's like, you know, so real and so good. I don't know, I think they want to just, yeah, everybody know, you know, Pringles already. So it's just yeah. like, okay. Um, I didn't know there were several thing, flavors. This is though. awesome and look at this new flavor, right? Oh, okay. I think, yeah, it's there like joking, but in a serious way, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, for sure. There's always some kind of sales yeah, message like, behind it. I mean, hopefully, yeah, otherwise. I think they, they want you to think like, hey, wow. I mean, okay. maybe this is yeah. good. Okay. Let's try it. Let's see what Dylan thinks. Yeah, I think they're trying to show like the versatility between them. Okay. Because, you know, you, you, you can buy like, you know, your standard chip flavors, but you can't necessarily like mix them and like flavor wise and stuff like that. So that's kind of like the versatility okay. of them is like you're able to like stack them and create, you know, a flavor that you wouldn't necessarily find in a standard right. chip bag. Right. Okay. And then Henry? Um, yeah, I mean, I agree with what they're saying. I feel like that's kind of like to reel you into the commercial to, I don't know, like make you like the commercial. But I think the real point is to like upsell more chips, if that makes sense. <laughs> Got you. Sure. Yeah. Now you want to have three different cans of them because yeah, you want exactly. to have those three different flavors. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. And then, and, and what about the woo, ah, ee, that kind of stuff? Like, wh what's up with that? Is that just fun? Like, just like a little crazy or something? Or is, or is that a meme, or like, a, a would-be yeah. meme kind of? Is that the like relief? That's it. relief? Okay. Yeah. It's, it's being funny? Yeah, yeah. Just to be funny. Yeah. I, I think uh, I remember some other like Pringles commercials and they are always trying to be kind of like funny. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think it's just following, you know, okay. the style of the okay. Pringles. Right. Let's just this time have them do something a little outrageous or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then the guy in the parachute and all. I, I don't know. There's a bunch of stuff there. Which, uh, I don't know. But you guys have definitely uh, explained a lot of it to me. Just you know, in terms of the you know product differentiation, buy more of them, uh, feel creative, putting together different stuff. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> you know. And then the other stuff. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. You know, it's just several million dollars. Somebody thought it was okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, thank you. That was fun. Interesting. And it, it brought us, you know, to appreciate, you know, just a few of the central considerations of you know, designing an ad or something is like, who's your target audience? That was interesting. I mean, you couldn't have a broader target audience than the Super Bowl because you are programming for 200 million people or plus, you know, so that's going to cover everybody. But I did feel especially, you know, the specification of the Groupon audience, I thought, that made a lot of sense, you know, in terms of who the spokesperson is, who the, you, you know, who's likely to buy group bonds and be sensitive to that, the kinds of arguments that they said. So, so yeah, there was, I think, the potential, even within what we know to be the most diverse audience out there in broadcasting, that did make a lot of sense, too. So that's cool. And then just the various techniques you're using to make it fun, interesting, hook people. So that was good. That was fun. Thank you. So next class, we're going to uh, talk more, a little bit about the advertising slides and stuff, and, and then jump, jump into a review. And then so next Thursday, you got to be here to write the exam unless you have, you know, a really good reason or something, then we'll create a makeup date for you. So talk to me if that's an issue. But otherwise, hope to see everybody streaming and in person, but here for the exam on Thursday. Okay, it's advertising as well in here. It is in there as well, yeah. So it's chapters one through seven. Uh, I just did an announcement on the review page, so it's it should be pushed to your city college email or in Canvas you'll see it for yourselves too. So a lot of ways to see that.